You're listening to episode 15 of the Fearless English Podcast. Welcome to the Fearless English Podcast, where it's all about helping you confidently communicate with anyone without compromising who you are. Let's get started, Fearless Learner. Hello, Tom, and welcome to the Fearless English Podcast. Thank you, Halima. What a pleasure. What an honor to be here. Super excited for today's conversation because we're going to be talking about your awesome book. But before we go there, I want to get to know you. I want everybody to know who Tom is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm Tom um, and I run Eat Sleep Dream English, which is my YouTube channel. I teach fresh modern British English to anyone that wants to learn. Um, and yeah, I'm from London. I'm a, a native Londoner, um, North London, well, North East London. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been doing Eat Sleep Dream English for about five years now, something like that. Yeah, time flies. It really does. But so, uh, how but, about yeah. before that, like before that was born? Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about like your where you were born and um, leading up to Eat Dream Sleep English, like how it was born uh, and so yeah. on? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I was born, as I say, in, in North London. And I guess uh, my mum was an English teacher. So I guess the apple never falls far from the tree, right? You kind of, you kind of follow your parents' path in some way. So yeah, my mum was an English teacher, went on to do uh, writing, and she uh, used to inspect language schools uh, around Britain. And um, she worked for the British Council and stuff. So yeah, she, uh, I guess she influenced me. Even though it's one of those things where you, you kind of, you either rebel against your parents or you follow them. And I, I guess I wasn't much of a rebel, so I, I followed her. So I went to, to uni and studied media and popular culture, um, which was a complete Mickey Mouse course, if I'm honest, but great socially uh, in Leeds, loved Leeds, loved going to the north of England and immersing myself in, um, in northern culture, which was just completely alien to me as, as a Londoner. Um, and then I, I left... Uh, leads and started at the BBC so I worked in television for a year uh, oh, which I, I guess like that. yeah I guess it sort oh. of translated my sort of degree translated into into media so yeah I worked on a, a TV program called what not to wear for the BBC which is all the fashion program no yeah I so, love that show <laughs> it's good fun right and it, it had two presenters called Trini and Susanna uh, who were super famous at the time they left the show to go to ITV and so they brought new two new presenters in Misha Paris and Lisa Butcher and that was the series that I was on so I was the runner I drove them up to Blackpool for a shoot. I would get them Singapore noodles in their break times. You know, I would do oh, anything boy. they wanted. Um, I'd entertain them, uh, you know. So, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, and then I worked in um, sort of development of TV programs for half a year as well. So, yeah, I did a year of TV. But at the end of it, I sort of realized that it wasn't really for me. It wasn't really fulfilling my, uh, my, me. And um, so, my, as I say, my mum was a teacher. My girlfriend at the time was also an English teacher. I just saw how much joy she got from it. So I, I did the CELTA course um, in St. Giles uh, in Highgate, uh, which was an amazing month. I mean, overwhelming. Uh, you know, the first day you're put up in front of a class of students and it's just the scariest thing. All I had to do was get their names. I had a five minute slot where I just had to get everyone's names and then play a little game with it. But it was the most terrifying thing I had done at that point. But I loved it. It was the buzz, the excitement of it. And then, yeah, over the month, you kind of learn how to be a teacher. But you're still learning the, the grammar and, and the, the phrases and your, how to describe language. Because that's something that maybe we didn't, I, I, I don't remember learning how to describe language as a school kid. So I didn't know what a phrasal verb was or what the past perfect yeah. was. Um, so all of that, it's like, it's not just developing your teaching skills, but it's also learning being able to explain the language to your students. And I remember uh, teaching the past perfect when I should have been teaching the present perfect. And the students knew, they were like, what are you doing? And I was like, no, this is correct. And I'm the teacher. And by the end, they were like, no, we think you're pretty much wrong here. And I was like, oh yeah, no, you're absolutely right. So you have those experiences. Anyway, so yeah, so I started teaching. I loved it. I taught in London. Very kind of, um, the classrooms were filled with students from around the world. It was amazing. You'd have someone from South Korea, next to someone from Turkey, next to someone from Italy. It was just amazing mix. And I loved it. And then I essentially wanted to, to teach to travel around the world um, and be in front of people and connect with people. So yeah, that's, 
yeah, sorry, it's a very long-winded way of telling <laughs> you how I became a teacher. Yeah, so, I mean, have you traveled anywhere? Yeah, for sure. So then having taught in London for a little bit, I decided to go to Spain, to San Sebastian, and I taught there for a year, which was amazing in the Basque country, really beautiful place um, and really great experience. And then I just had this these itchy feet. I was like, I just need to go even further afield. So I got a transfer to Buenos Aires in Argentina and I lived there for a year teaching at International House. And that was a phenomenal experience. That was just, I, oh my God, I loved it. It just, the city just gets under your skin. It just kind of becomes an addiction. And I sort of felt like I was becoming an Argentine, uh, learning the language, yeah. the gestures, the people were amazing. Like I'd hang out with my students all the time. They were, um, I was sort of 24, 5, 26, 27, something like that. So they were all around my age. So it was great, like socially, just yeah. hanging out with them. And yeah, they're amazing, amazing people. So yeah, that was great. And then I left there because I was earning no money. I had holes, literally I had holes in my shoes. Um, <laughs> and it felt really far away from, from my family. And I think my sister had had a kid. So I then came back home and then I went out to Hong Kong and I did three and a half years in teaching in Hong Kong, which was also just a phenomenal experience. So those were my big adventures and then I, I've been in London ever since. When did you decide to um, have a YouTube channel? Was it when you came back to London? Yeah that's right so in 2015 my mum got quite sick she got quite ill um, and so I had to come back to look after her so I was her, her primary carer wow. um, so I left Hong Kong to come back to London and as I was caring for her I was living with her but I wasn't able to work and so I still had this like creative energy that, that was inside me and I was like, I need to do something. So in my spare time, I decided to record my first YouTube video. Now, sorry, going back a little bit in 2012, I had a, a podcast um, that was teaching okay. English. I, I wasn't very successful with it. So, and I went to Hong Kong and kind of got distracted there, but I knew that I wanted to start it up again, but I thought, well, you know what, I'll, I'll try YouTube this time because YouTube at the time was, was sort of starting to grow. Uh, yeah, I thought that I'd release one video on YouTube and it would go to like a million views for sure. <laughs> it's going to go to me easily. Right. Yeah. And you know, you release your first YouTube video and it's like 10 views and five of them were your mom. So it's like, okay, <laughs> yeah, right. this is, yeah, this is not great. Okay. But I'll do another one and that one will go to the million views. And that one went to 20 views and, and so on and so on. And I think it took about a year and a half before anything really happened which is a long time if you're just you know sort of working really hard at it yeah for, to see no results for, for such a long time it was hard um and you you always hear people talking about like being an overnight success but yeah. i 100% know that there's very few overnight successes yeah that anyone i know that's got to where they are has been working at it for years and years and years yeah, no, I, I completely understand where you're coming from. I've experienced the same thing um, with YouTube and it was just not my place. And that's kind of why I love um, this podcast so much. It feels like I'm home now. Right, is, right, right. It's, awesome. it's so important, isn't it, to find your medium, to find the platform that, that suits you best. And I, I love podcasts. I think they're incredible. And I think they're an amazing way to to learn and to absorb information, aren't they? Like you yeah. could be you know, just walking around in the park, listening to a podcast. And yeah, I think they're phenomenal. So yeah, um, absolutely. I do think they're amazing. That's how I consume content anyway as well. But yeah, so oh, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing um, your journey. Hello, fearless learners. So this week's episode was divided into two parts. The first part focuses on talking about yourself. So Tom talks about his background, where he's from, where he was born. Um, and I decided to divide the podcast into two parts. So the next episode is going to be about his book. And thank you for listening. And I'll see you. Um, I'll talk to you next week. Bye.